Hey, what's going on, y'all? I'm Rumble Gaming, the home of the gaming, and I'm pretty sure that we can all agree that the Super Mario Galaxy games aren't that difficult overall. But if you're looking for a challenge with these games, then you should look no further than the Prankster Comets. These levels remix galaxies already in the game by adding a challenging twist to them, such as putting in a speedrun timer or only giving the player one health to beat it with. And while most of the Prankster Comets won't give you too much trouble, there are some that are crazy difficult to beat. That's why today we're going to be ranking the top 10 hardest Prankster Comets in both Super Mario Galaxy and Super Mario Galaxy 2. As joining us for today's ranking is the main man himself, Infinite Bits. How's it going, bro? Oh, it's going pretty good over here, Bramble. And hello, everyone. I run a channel called Infinite Bits here on YouTube where I make gaming videos. Shocker, I know, but that's not important right now because we are here today to rank the toughest prankster comments. And with that all said, y'all, let's get started. All right, we're starting off this list with some galactic nature here. We got the purple coin slide from Tall Trunk Galaxy. Okay, when you start off the level, everything seems not all that bad. You hear the Mario 64 music playing, they give you some free purple coins, and then the slide starts in a straight line. But then things ramp up pretty quickly. They start adding all these spiky things on the track and multiple holes in these tubes that you have to avoid. It gets even worse when you go back to the outside slide sections where now the guardrails have been removed, making even a slight slip up an instant death in which you have to start the whole thing again. It's not only the holes in the spikes that you have to avoid here, but you also have to jump over huge gaps on the slide later on. These jumps are quite easy to mess up because there's usually spikes on the very edge of the gaps that, if you get hit by when you land, will knock you off the slide and straight into the void. Yeah, in order to beat this level, you just have to be very precise and make sure you don't miss too many of the coins. And that can be pretty hard when, later in the slide, they start having these multiple paths of coins to choose from. At these parts, you're required to think on your feet and quickly decide which path of coins is the better option to go to. And it's finished with a super narrow section that also has a sharp curve in it, so you gotta turn with the whole tube tree thing at the perfect time. What kind of trees are these, anyway? While the Mario series is known for having really easy boss battles, the Prankster Comet fight with Bouldergeist is actually a decent challenge. The twist here is that you have to beat this boss without taking a single hit of damage. Now, many other bosses in this game would be very easy to defeat without getting hit, but Bouldergeist is definitely not one of them, thanks to his high health and his annoying attacks. This phantom will mainly throw rocks at you during the battle and some of these rocks will spawn in explosive boos that you can spin into his body to deal one hit of damage. This can be easily done in his first phase, but once he takes four hits of damage, he'll move on to his second phase where the true pain of the battle begins. In this phase, Bouldergeist will create two gigantic rock hands to shield his body and to try and punch and crush you with. These attacks are quite slow, but so is Mario, and it's very easy to get hit by one of them if you aren't able to snag an explosive boo or get out of the way in time. And on top of all these new attacks that Bouldergeist now has, he is also harder to hit with a boo in this phase. This is because all these stalagmites and his new giant hands all act as shields of sorts for him. So you have to weave your way through all these rock formations now just to land one hit. Because of the length of the fight and the many annoying attacks that this boss dishes out, Bouldergeist's Daredevil Run is definitely one of the hardest prankster comets out of them all. The next prankster comet here is honestly one I forgot even existed, but oh, 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 there's a reason why I suppress the memories of this level. This is the Battle Station Purple Coins from Dreadnought Galaxy. What makes this purple coin mission particularly difficult is that there are only a hundred purple coins, meaning you have to collect all of them. Wouldn't be so bad if you can go back and get the ones you missed? but we don't have that kind of luxury here. You always have to keep up with these lifts, but that's not so bad, I hear you say. Just stay on the lift and get the coins. Oh, if only it were that easy. There's all this crap being thrown at you, like these cannons, electric wires, and just regular platforms that you have to jump over. And sometimes you'll be sideways or even upside down, which is pretty disorienting when you have to carefully pick up objects that you basically can't miss. And some of these sections where the gravity changes after you jump from one to another platform are a real pain in the neck because these platforms start blazing forward as soon as you land on them, barely giving you any time to collect the many coins floating above where they started. 
it majorly sucks. And then there's this part here where you totally have to get off your platform and they even try and hide three coins above the thwomp that you can hardly see. So you quickly scramble and get all the coins in time so the platform doesn't leave without you. But after all the hardships and challenges, it's still possible to make it to the very end of the level after getting exactly 99 coins. Oh yes, 99 coins. Because they actually placed the final one coin during the launch star section, making you think that you actually missed the coin. Nintendo, I see what you did there, trying to fake me out and cause me to panic. Just uh, let me get this star and I'm out of this level. Ah uh, yes, Luigi's Purple Coins. One of the most famous prank comments that everyone remembers from Super Mario Galaxy because of its sheer difficulty. In fact, this level is talked about so much that Nintendo went ahead and remixed it again for Super Mario Galaxy 2. And while that version is challenging in its own right, the original is definitely the hardest between the two. Here, you've got to collect 100 purple coins on platforms that make pixel art of a giant 8-bit Luigi, except that all of Luigi's pixels are either poison, shrinking platforms, or blocks that flip around as soon as you land on them. You know, completely safe. These platforms make backtracking this level extremely hard, and these purple coins are not that easy to get as well, as some of them require perfect long jumps or spin jumps over the void. And this prankster comment is just super intense. There's literally no safe ground in the entire level other than like the starting platform, but you're gonna have to leave from that area very soon. And because of this, you just always feel on edge with this level. Like you quickly have to think what your next moves are gonna be, and that just makes it very hectic. But the cherry on top of the Starbit cake is that this purple coin comet also has a timer attached to it, only giving the player 3 full minutes to collect all of the coins before losing a life. And even if you are able to collect 100 coins and spawn the star in, the timer will keep on counting down, meaning that you could complete the challenge but still easily die right before you reach the star. And let me tell you, when that happens, it is a huge punch to the gut. If this is secretly Luigi's revenge for all of the disrespect that he's gotten over the years, I honestly wouldn't be surprised. Alright, there's no playing around with this next comment here. There's no gimmicks, no purple coins, and no timers. It's just a test of your raw platforming capabilities. This is the Cosmic Clone Wall Jumpers from Flipout Galaxy. There is just two key elements here that when combined, really work well together and add a lot of challenge. These are of course the flip switches that change when you do a spin, and the Cosmic Marios that follow your every move. With these switches, you have to think ahead and make sure you don't flip them at the wrong time, so the platform you're trying to jump to doesn't flip on you. Only problem is, you now don't have time to stop and think ahead because all of your Mario buddies are right on your tail. You always gotta keep moving. And the hardest part of this one comes right at the end, where you have to make wall jump after wall jump over nothing below while the clones are still right on your tail. This part is not only tough due to the platforming, but at one point one of the clones can phase through the wall right after you jump up to it and knock you over, stunning you all the way into the void. With that threat of death always there, this part is crazy nerve wracking to go through. Jeez, I'm getting stressed just watching this footage. Honestly, this is actually a very well designed level with a great combination of mechanics. But man, is this level ever hard. So surprisingly enough, there's not just one boss battle comment on this list, but two! Count them, two of them! Because coming in at number 5 we have the throwback throwdown speedrun from Super Mario Galaxy 2, where you have to beat 5 bosses back to back in only 5 minutes. And 5 minutes is barely any time to beat 5 full boss fights in a row without dying once. Now okay sure, the first two bosses in this gauntlet, being Dino Ferrana and King Caliente, are kind of easy to beat quickly, but it's the last three that will take the longest and give you the most trouble. Major Burrows can drain a lot of your time if you miss your chance to attack him, Boulder Guy's battle is very luck based and can take a very long time to spawn in any explosive boost, and the fight against the fiery Dino Piranha is just difficult in general. These three bosses are no joke in a speedrun challenge, especially Boulder Guy's. 
since his hands can really mess up your run by blocking your attacks. And Fiery Dino Piranha is nothing to scoff at either, as you'll very often get to this boss with a minute or less, and his fight will absolutely mess you up if you try to take it too fast. But what's really annoying for this type of comet specifically is that there is so much waiting you have to do. You have to wait for all the bosses to do their big attack animations before you have a chance to attack them. And if you mess up the window where you can attack the boss, then you have to wait and watch the boss do their whole attack animations again, which kills more precious time. If you aren't very experienced with these boss fights, you'll be dying a lot to the timer or even the bosses themselves, as this unique speedrun is a crazy challenge that gives the player a total run for their money. Alright, things are starting to get steamy here, because now let's move on to the Lava Spire Daredevil Comet. And what you have to do here is just complete the normal level, but without taking any damage. Simple enough, right? But no. What an absolute gauntlet of a level that this is. This is the only Daredevil Comet, for some reason, that is just the entire level in length making it super long. Whereas all the other Daredevil Comets are only the boss battle sections in the first Galaxy game. Because of this, you really have to be careful for the entire time to not take any damage. And what doesn't help this is the fact that there is so much stuff that can just instantly kill you. The lava rock enemies, the hot steam, the fireballs, and of course, the lava itself. And if that wasn't bad enough, right after that you have to go through a Polestar segment that's one of the hardest of its kind in the game. Because one, Polestars are never reliable, but two, all of the jumping fireballs can get in your way without any warning instantly killing you and resetting the run. And then they shove this segment in the level where you have to collect the five star pieces while crammed on this tiny planet with all these obstacles thrown at you. Yeah, this part can get a little dicey, let's say. But then the star finishes with the climbing of the spire. Oh yeah, the lava is raising right behind you, the enemies are in your way, and even boulders are shooting out of the spire itself. And don't forget that if you take damage at any part in this last section, you have to complete the whole level over again without any damage just to get back here. It's a pretty nice set piece in the level, I'll give you that, but it is a very hard comet overall. Hey yo, so Infinite Bits, have you ever actually met someone who liked motion controls? Hmm, no one in particular comes to mind there. However, I can assure you one thing, this guy definitely doesn't like motion controls. Definitely. I've almost never met anyone who actually likes these controls, because often they just feel sloppy and unpredictable. And the Super Mario Galaxy games have some of the most annoying motion controls out of the whole Mario series, especially in the Star Ball levels. With these courses, you have to hold the Wii Remote straight up and tilt it to roll the Star Ball in that direction. And Purple Coins on the Rainbow Road, number 3 on our list, is a level where you have only 2 minutes to collect 100 coins while rolling down incredibly steep slopes on top of one of those motion controlled glass balls. Doesn't that just sound easy? Because the glass ball is so hard to control precisely, missing a string of these purple coins while it's blazing down the steep rainbow slopes is incredibly easy. And unlike Luigi's Purple Coins, which had 150 coins in total, this level only has 110, so even just missing a few of those is going to hurt you a lot. It's not like you can go back up the slopes and just get them once you've missed them. Now there are a few slower sections of the level that have coins scattered around a flat area, and you have to take it slow and turn around a lot to collect all of them. But of course, you have to do it fast, because that 2 minute timer isn't waiting around for anybody, so you'll often have to leave a couple behind in order to actually get to the end. No, but for real, just like the Boss Blitz Galaxy, this timer gives no slack, and it alone makes this comet an insane challenge. You can easily get right to the end and die mid-air after breaking the glass ball. It's really not cool. Okay, here's the formula used to create a very hard prankster comet. 100 purple coin mission? Check. An incredibly tight timer? Check and a weird bubble motion controls that make it imprecise when controlling Mario. Ugh, yeah, check. Mix all those together and we got the ghostly galaxy purple coins. 
Yes, we're talking about another purple coin mission here, and a motion control purple coin mission at that. See, this one's actually super hard because they only give you a minute to collect a hundred purple coins. So you need to be collecting at least like 25 coins every 15 seconds. Or so you would think, because even when you get 100 coins in the level and the star appears, the timer doesn't even stop and then you have to rush and grab the star within the 60 seconds. So really, you need more than 25 coins every 15 seconds. Like come on Nintendo, I got all the coins, at least stop the timer, that's a cheap shot. But really, this is just a very difficult and honestly frustrating level, since all of this has to be done with the very imprecise motion controls. Not only that, but the motion controls for this one are even worse in the 3D All-Stars version of this game, because instead of being able to point with a Wii remote to move Mario around, you have to control the cursor by tilting the entire controller that you're playing with, and the best part is that the sensitivity on the tilting motion is extremely high, so you'll be fighting the controller more than the actual level, making it much harder and way more frustrating to beat. You're literally bouncing around on these uh, pieces of meat, okay, for the entire time while trying to complete this. It almost adds a weird element of luck in this mission since you seem to bounce around more than you should. And that just causes you to, you know, not go where you want to go. So yes, this comet is just a blend of a bunch of difficult tasks and mechanics in a single level. But I do believe that there is one comet that's harder. And finally, at number one on our list, I'm sure you all were expecting it, we have the Good Egg Galaxy Purple Coins! That's right, when you're playing this monstrosity, guess what, you have to collect 100 purple coins over the entire Good Egg Galaxy! Do you know how many coins that is? Okay, if this is what one coin looks like, this is what 100 would look like, okay? Plus, sometimes you have to use two launch stars in a row, which, you know, it's kind of hard to do that, because, you know, you have to shake the Wii Remote and then shake it... <laughs> Uh, but no, in all seriousness, of course, at number one, we have the perfect run in Super Mario Galaxy 2, which is the prankster comet of the insanely challenging level that you unlock after you 100% complete the game, Grandmaster Galaxy. This level was the first of its type to show up in a 3D Mario game, and has become a staple for the series ever since, where once you start, you're put up against six brutally challenging sections, each focused around different gimmicks from the game. The enemies and obstacles that this level combines will make you lose your mind because there's nothing else quite like them. From using Yoshi on swinging flowers and a minefield of bombs and bullet bills, to using a cloud mushroom to float through an electric maze, to using flip switches and shrinking platforms to avoid shockwaves and octopuses in barrels firing flaming coconuts at your face! It's completely bonkers how much crap is thrown at the player in this level, and it is all crafted to be exceptionally challenging to overcome. Now that was just all of the base level, because in the perfect run, the prankster comet, you're required to beat this level hitless. That's right, you have to fully complete the hardest level in the game without taking damage, with no checkpoints, and some sections of the level are made even harder. Like, I'm talking about way harder. Really, to beat this level, you have to be the perfect Mario Galaxy 2 player. You're being tested with the majority of the main mechanics in the game. And the level even mixes it up at times, combining two previous mechanics together, which adds new challenges that you've never seen before. You can't truly understand how difficult this level is unless you've tried to beat it yourself, because it is such a brutality of a level. The most challenging and worst part of the comment is right at the end, where the game chucks a horde of Sniper Hammer Brothers, Boomerang Brothers, and Flipping Womps at the player, expecting them to dodge all of that and defeat all the Boomerang Brothers without taking damage. And since this is the sixth and final section, dying here will make you have to go through the first five sections hitless again. This is a pure endurance test, straight from the depths of Nintendo's basement. And I'll be the one to say it, it is the hardest level out of any Mario game by a long shot. And even if you disagree with that opinion, I'm pretty sure it's an objective fact that the perfect run in the Grandmaster Galaxy is hands down the hardest prankster comet out of them all. Well guys, thank you so much for watching this top 10, and a huge thank you to Infinite Bits for joining me on today's video. Make sure to show him some love by checking out his own channel. And if you enjoyed this top 10, why not subscribe? It'd help you not miss any of the future top 10s and rankings that I make from here on out. Anyways, I hope you have a fantastic day. Ramble Gaming, over and out.